is a liquid, so we're moving through the states of matter. Um, so a couple things you know about liquids is that they have an indefinite shape. Um, so they take the shape of containers and stuff. You can change their shape. They do have a definite volume, and because they have a definite volume, you cannot easily compress them. Um, so a couple different things about liquids here. The major difference here is that there are intermolecular forces. So these are those attractions between the liquid, the molecules. And basically what that means is that is that they are held very close together. The molecules are touching, the atoms are touching, so there's not that space that we had in the gases. Um, because of this, immediately what it does is that they, they are much more dense. And what happens is this is due to the fact that there's a lot more particles in a smaller volume. Um, and it, this relates back to the particles being close together, touching, and it goes back to attractions. So these intermolecular forces are really important um, because of what they do to states of matter. Um, the particles are touching, but they're not steady, so they can move, um, and they can flow, so they can slide past each other. They do have that movement, which, you know, that's how we pour our liquids, so we're all aware of that. Second thing here with phase changes, um, what we have here is liquid, we said liquid to solid, it was freezing. So um, again, you're going from a liquid that has more energy to solid with less energy, so it's going to release um, energy, and there's going to be even more attractions to particles because solids have the most uh, attraction. We had said before about the different types of vaporization. We said with boiling, you're continually adding kinetic energy to the situation, so you're continually increasing it, and that's allowing them to gain energy, and when they have enough energy, they actually um, leave the liquid state. Evaporation, again, this is naturally occurring, and this is just um, when they have enough na uh, energy naturally couple of things here just with the evaporation. Um, you can only evaporate if you have a certain amount of kinetic energy. So if you don't have enough kinetic energy, you're not going anywhere. Um, so basically, the more, the higher your temperature, the higher your kinetic energy, the more likely you are to evaporate. Um, this is called um, an endothermic process because you're, the heat needs to be added to the system. Um, so the heat is going into the system. And when we say the system, we're talking about whatever, the puddle, the, the a cup of water or whatever. Um, and what that does is it actually uses heat for this to happen because the molecules are breaking those intermolecular forces. Um, and this is actually why your body sweats. So your body releases water on, you know, under the surface of your skin and that water gets heat, uses the heat from your body and it actually um, evaporates and then actually takes the heat from your body and it actually cools your body, which is why sometimes if you're like really sweaty and you stop working out, you can almost, you can actually take a chill or something um, because you feel like, oh, it, all of a sudden my body's really cold. A um, couple different things here. There's the things when you have a liquid, you also have what's called a vapor pressure. So any kind of liquid has um, a, a, some molecules have enough energy to leave, and what that allows them to do is they actually have a, basically a little layer of um, vapor or gas over top of them of that same thing. So like if you have a cup of water, you have a little bit of water vapor over top of your cup of water, um, and that's just naturally occurring. Um, so um, like any lake or anything, they have like all, in the morning you can almost see like the haze of it, and that's that the, the vapor over top of it. Um, boiling point is a measure of vapor pressure, and boiling point is when your vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure. So we typically think of atmospheric pressure as one atmosphere. So if my vapor pressure equals one atmosphere, that's my boiling point. There's two ways that you can achieve um, boiling point. The most common one is to raise your temperature. You're adding kinetic energy and the molecules are able to escape. Another less typical one is to lower your pressure. So if there's um, less pressure, the molecules don't need as much energy to escape. Um, and it's actually uh, pretty cool to see this, um, that, that you can do it. Um, you can look it up on YouTube or anything. But if you have a vacuum um, pump, you can actually um, lower the pressure enough that you can actually freeze or boil water at room temperature, which is really uh, unusual for us to see. And here you can just see, um, here's our boiling uh, temperature, and here's our pressure. So you can see here, the lower the pressure, the lower it's boiling. So here, um, this is about atmospheric pressure, right here, 760. Um, and you can see, actually, that's, never mind. This is in millibars, I apologize. So here we go. Boiling point's 100 up here at the 1,000 the millibar. If you lower that pressure, so say you're climbing 
I don't know, you know, Himalayas, or you're going to Colorado, the lower that pre the lower your overall pressure is on the atmosphere, you can actually boil at lower temperatures, which is why there's the high altitude uh, cooking information and stuff. And then last thing here is just um, like kind of reading a graph. So here's another one. This is the vapor pressure versus temperature, and there's different. Um, chemicals here. This is chloroform, ethanol, water, and then this one, I don't know why I didn't show up, the ethanoic, you can kind of see it, but it's like a white line, I apologize. Um, here's um, atmospheric pressure, the 101.3 kPa, so that black line up, up here, that is like where we normally live. So anything less than this would meet like low pressure, like we would probably be dead down here. Um, and then basically what you can see is you can see that when it's really cold, there's not much vapor pressure. And as we increase our temperature, the vapor pressure increases until a point in where our vapor pressure equals our atmospheric pressure, which is our boiling point. So if you're looking here, the first question is, what's the boiling point of chloroform at 101.3 kPa? So the boiling point is when the vapor pressure, this black line, equals atmospheric pressure, which is 101.3. So what we do is we just see where they intersect, which is right here. So this one right here, this would be 60 degrees Celsius. Our second one here, what is the vapor pressure of ethanol at 40 degrees Celsius? We're just reading the chart. So we have to find ethanol, which is the second line here. We have to go to 40 degrees and go up and over. And we're roughly at 20 kPa's. And then this last one here, what would atmospheric pressure need to be for ethanoic acid to boil at 8 degrees Celsius? Um, so what we have to do is we're at 80 Celsius. We'd have to go up and see, okay, what is this vapor pressure? And it's kind of, like I said, I apologize, it's hard to see here, but you can see it crosses the line right here at about 30, right here. So if this was going to be our boiling point, then atmospheric pressure would have to be 30 kPa's, and we'd all be dead, um, but that would be what it would have to be for that one. So this is video five, uh, liquids.